Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the next uh, video here wants to know um, what an equation of a graph, what the equation of the function would be if a graph looked like this. It has the shape of y equals x squared. It's turned upside down, and we're going to the and we're moving the original graph to the right six units. So basically, here's what's going to happen. Y equals upside down is going to be taken care of by starting it off as the opposite of. That's going to turn the graph upside down. Right six units. We're going to have inside parens. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. Whenever you're moving to the left or right, the sign in here is just the opposite of what you think. So to the right six units, we're going to make this say x minus six. Okay? And part of the rationale there, what would make this become zero? Is a positive six, and that's six to the right. So remember, with x, it's always backwards. So the upside down is taken care of with the minus. Right six units is taken care of by putting x minus 6 in parens, and the shape of x squared means that we have to put a squared outside the parens so that we know that this graph is a parabola that's being moved this way. So there's my final answer. y equals the opposite of, and then quantity, x minus 6 squared. That's my answer to that first problem. Okay, in the next problem, I have the shape of y equals the absolute value of x, so it's a v. We're moving it to the left five units and up three. Well, the answer is going to be y equals, okay, left five units. I'm going to put my absolute value bars with the x in it, but left or right has to go with the x. So inside the bars I have to put the number 5 and the reason I don't have to put parens is because the absolute value bars are acting as my parens like they did up here. Down here it's an automatic grouping. If I'm going to the left 5 units I make this sign a plus. Because after all, if I asked you what would make this 0, you would say negative 5. And that would remind you 5 to the left. And another way to remember it, x is always backwards. What x, the way you write it, is always backwards. So if I'm going to the left 5, it's a plus 5. And then up 3 units. Up means the y value. The y value always does what it says. So up 3 means plus 3. So that is my answer. When you're doing these kind of problems, what you need to remember is x is backwards and y isn't. So when I look at this answer, the plus 3 means up 3, x plus 5 means 5 to the left. And of course the reason I put the absolute value bars is because that's the shape I was told to use here. Okay? And my last example, which is very similar to what we've done in the first two. It has the shape of y equals x squared, upside down, right 3, and up 4. So my answer is going to be y equals, upside down means it starts with a minus, right 3. Here I have to put the parens. Up here, the absolute value bars acted as my grouping symbols, but with the parabola, I don't have them, so I have to put them. And if I'm going right 3, remember, the x is always backwards, so instead of plus 3, we do minus 3. I put the squared on the outside of the parens to get my parabola in here. And up 4 is my y value, and y value does exactly what it says it's going to do. So if it says up 4, at the end you do a plus 4, 
if it said down 4 at the end, you would do a minus 4. So let's talk through why this is the answer. y equals, of course, opposite is upside down, squared means parabola, x minus 3 in parens means x is being, the graph is being shifted to the right 3. What would make this 0? A positive 3, and in your brain that's 3 to the right, and up 4 would be a plus 4. And we're done.